So in the last session, we talked about Avro file format. So we said that the main main use of the Avro file format is your generic serialization and deserialization. So the, the team B need not depend on the, I mean, they need not make the changes in their code just because at the source side, they have made some changes or added few fields. So such things could be handled with the Avro file format. Now in, in Kafka also, Avro is being used. Just remember that Avro is a file format. And in Kafka, we deal we don't deal with files, we deal with messages. Now, how this file format is being used in messages that we will see. So I said that I said that we have producer. So this producer uses Avro serializer. Serializes the data. In, in, in fact, serializes the messages and sends that message to the Kafka cluster. So our consumer will read from this Kafka cluster and it will use Avro deserializer to deserialize these messages. So we have our consumer. Now, now the problem with this is like, as I said earlier, Avro is a file format. And inside the file, you will have the, you will have the schema as well. So if, if this is your Avro data, This is your Avro data and and here you will have the schema as well. Somewhere it will be storing the schema. Let's say data dot Avro. Now usually, usually uh, the, the schema will be few KBs schema will be usually few kbs let's say it is around a uh, uh, 5 K, kb your data may be your file may be around probably it could be 1 gb or 500 mb or, or 5 gb anything your data may be a because it's a file and in Hadoop, you will usually see that there will be a 1 GB file or a 500 MB file or, or 5 GB file somewhere around a larger file I'm trying to say here. Now, if you see here, the schema is comparatively very less in bytes. So, so it doesn't matter, doesn't matter whether you have 1 GB, 5 K, 1 GB and 5 K kilobytes of extra data. It's it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't make much difference. You have 5 GB of data. If you put extra 5 kilobytes, extra 5 kilobytes as a header, it doesn't matter at all. Nothing, nothing. There is no drastic change. So schema, including schema here, as part of the data. It doesn't add any extra overhead. I mean, not extra, lot of extra overhead. That doesn't, that data doesn't matter at all. But in this case, in this case, you, we will be sending messages. Now message, message size itself could be, message size itself could be some, somewhere around three, three kilobytes. 
if you put the header also let's say header header again is somewhere around uh, 3 kb for each message you need to add the header for each message we need to add the header here so in this case you, your message size has doubled which is not a good idea which is not a this should not be happening so i hope you got the idea how, uh, i mean what i am trying to say here file for avro is a file format or a generic deserializer and serializer but it it poses a problem when used with the uh, message queues because when you in, include the schema your message size gets double which is not a good thing you have to keep your message size as minimum as possible unnecessarily you are increasing the bandwidth by two times bandwidth is consumed two times instead of being consumed once how can this be solved so this is where this is where the schema registry came into picture A schema registry is a web server running on a 8081 port. So what happens here is, what happens here is, the Avro serializer, the schema is not sent along with the message. The Avro serializer, what will do is, it will save the schema here. It will save the schema here and from here you will get a unique ID. A ID for that schema. So ID will be in, in bytes. A 4 byte unique ID can be generated. 128 bit unique ID can be generated. So, so it will be in, in terms of bytes. So by, that ID will be part of the message now. So instead of sending the schema, schema is stored in the schema registry and, and for that schema ID will be generated and that ID will be sent here with the each message. Now, as soon as this message comes here, the Avro deserializer will use that ID, will use that ID, and, and it will get the schema. And, and using that schema, it is able to get the fields out of those, those, those messages. So I hope you got the idea of how that problem is solved. The problem is solved with the help of schema registry. So that's, that's how the Avro serializer works in case of Kafka here. And that is the use of schema registry. Along with this, it could be also used for, usually it is usually used for uh, validation of the data as well. Earlier, data validation was not there. So, so Kafka used to just receive bytes and it used to send bytes to the uh, different, different consumers. As soon as the consumer asked for a, a message, so it used to send the bytes. So Kafka knows only about bytes, but, but using schema registry, it can validate the messages as well. If we put the validation of the, of the messages inside Kafka, 
again kafka's performance will decrease kafka is mainly used for sending messages and receiving messages it's a message queue if you put the logic of validating the messages inside kafka itself the performance of kafka will be uh, low as a result they they have the validation is usually done in a different server called schema registry that's the reason they could have put it in the same kafka itself but it will decrease the performance so the validation is made using the schema registry here. so i hope you got an idea of how the schema registry works here now keeping all these things in mind keeping all these things in mind now let's see how our end to end pipeline project works here so so along with that we'll also see how the spark streaming works here uh, we just gave a we just gave a introduction to spark streaming so i will just move on further with that spark streaming now so spark streaming is again a library on top of spark core it, it usually used to connect to you can directly connect to network application which is not recommended actually spark stream can connect to kafka message queue usually a message queue it will come in between your your application will be actually here where application will be sending the data and and our spark streaming is our consumer here we can think of it consumes the messages from kafka similarly there are different message queues like kinesis there are different message queues like like rabbit and q or zero and q so spark streaming has the ability to read messages i mean here here actually we have a consumer our spark streaming is having a kafka consumer embedded inside its its library so that it will consume the messages from these just like it will again send those uh, a request from some partition from some some topic some partition and from certain offset all those things are internally handled we don't have to write the code for that everything is internally handled in the consumer so here here spark streaming spark streaming is not a pure streaming it is again a batch processing spark streaming is again a batch processing only thing is the batch interval is a smaller now so we use spark is usually used for batch processing we know that the data already exist in the hdfs file system and our spark job reads that file and processes the data that that file may be existing there for the last one one month the data may be existing from the last six months so you process you are processing the data after six months so it is kind of a batch batch processing spark streaming also it is a kind of a batch processing only thing is the data is is i mean the batch time is not 6 months the batch time is here in terms of milliseconds and seconds i think somebody has a question and my case uh kumar so me you have a question 
otherwise i will i will put you on mute now now here here that's the reason here streaming application has a batch interval kind of a concept So batch interval is let's say let's say five seconds. So five when when we say a batch interval is five seconds, so every five seconds we will be getting the data. Uh, every five seconds means uh, we know that how a consumer works. Consumer keep on sending the requests. It doesn't mean that. here every 5 second the consumer is sending a request consumer will keep on sending the request you can have you can have multiple request from the consumer within this 5 seconds so the batch interval only what it means here is till 5 seconds how much ever data is collected that data will be processed so as soon as the consumer sends the request and gets the data that that data may not be processed immediately it will be collected for 5 seconds whatever data is collected for 5 seconds that data is processed so that is usually called as a batch so so the spark streaming will connect to the message queues or to an application directly keeps on getting the messages from here and it will accumulate those messages for 5 seconds in the executor memory and and as soon as 5 seconds is over your your data will be processed so that accumulated data is called as a batch this is the accumulated data for 5 seconds so we'll call it as batch 1 so this is the accumulated data for the next 5 seconds say batch 2 this is the accumulated data for the next 5 seconds we'll say it as batch 3 and so on continuously every 5 seconds it will keep on accumulating the messages and that that we call it as a batch so this batch could be internally represented as rdd now once once we have rdd we know that we can start processing the data here we can start processing the data we would apply our all kinds of transformations on our data here I, i mean i i don't remember whether i have explained these or not but if at all i have explained this then just think it is a repetition now this this is a continuously every 5 seconds you will be getting batches of data every 5 seconds these these batches of data together is called as d stream it is together is called as d stream so that that's how the processing works so d stream you can imagine d stream to be just like a collection of rdds you can just imagine in that that's the easiest way to uh, keep in mind or visualize a d stream d stream is just a collection of rdds and we know that rdd itself is a collection of of records so continuously your data will be processed here so i will just show how 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 we how we integrate it with the 
Kafka. So if you if you see here Kafka here. So you can have you will have a brokers a multi node Kafka cluster if you have you will have brokers. So let's say we have four brokers. So similarly similarly we can have consumers as well. I mean we can have a spark cluster. So we have our spark cluster. So this is broker one, broker two, broker three, broker four. So we can have a executor one, executor two, executor three, executor four. So we can have a, a task one here, some some task two, task three, task four here. So this task is a thread here. This thread will be consuming the data from it. This, this thread will be sending the request to a particular broker. One among them will be the coordinator consumer. All those things are hidden internal into the library. We don't have to worry about those stuff. We will be using just one API to connect Spark to Kafka. But internally all these things will be happening so that's the that's the use of having a distributed message queue that's the use of, otherwise otherwise if there is a single message queue if there is a message queue like 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 a java message queue it may not be distributed so your bottleneck will become your message queue it may not be able to handle millions of messages even if it is able to handle all those millions of messages will be going to one one task one task will be having to read those messages yes usually kafka cluster nodes are different from par cluster nodes as i said earlier Kafka also requires lot of memory because because of the uh, because it wants to keep the messages in memory. If you remember, I talked about OS flush, OS flush interval. So OS when when we commit a message to a file, actually the data will be in memory. So it it has its own requirement of uh, memory, CPU cores, and all. So usually you don't make it co-located with the spark you you maintain a separate cluster so this spark when i say it will be internal to your yarn this is your it could be a cloud era cluster this could be a cloud era cluster or a hortonworks cluster or your own cluster or just a spark cluster and this will be a separate kafka cluster yes it is it is better to have kafka as a separate cluster sometimes if you have not much data so in that case you can have a co-located but but as your data keeps on increasing it will be tough to make your one more cluster but that's the reason you always have a separate cluster for kafka Because it also has a lot of CPU requirements. It also has a lot of disk requirements. It also have a lot of memory requirements. So you don't want to share the, your, your single system's memory across multiple uh, powerful frameworks. So just make as a separate cluster. Now this is how internally things work. <coughs> Each task, <coughs> sorry, 
each task will be consuming the data from the brokers here just like we talked about it will send that offset number from which offset number it has to start consuming the messages and individually those offset will be committed to the to to kafka so that's that's how the things work <coughs> Now, whatever messages we are getting, whatever messages we are getting, we treat it as partitions. So this will be partition one, this will be partition two, this will be partition three, we'll have partition four. And this becomes our RDD. So every five seconds, every five seconds will get such rdds and, and internally each some multiple threads may be existing we know that we can have some other threads as well thread 5 thread 6 here thread 7 something like that thread 7 thread 8 thread 9 so these threads will be processing that data so in in an executor we can have multiple threads and those threads will be processing that data so as you can see here the data is being processed in parallel the data is being consumed in parallel so as and as your data increases your, your processing speed can also increase here so i hope i hope how the so so this is what happens internally When I say this is an RDD, internally it is nothing but this RDD is on their different on, on this divided and distributed across different systems in the Spark cluster. So I hope the things were clear how how Spark streaming interacts with the Kafka cluster here. But but the when, when we have discussed a lot of stuff with respect to Kafka and and how it integrates with spark here we have only one api to as as coding is concerned there is only one api we have to use we don't have to use a lot of code to write the uh, integration code with be integration between spark and kafka Let, let's see that code here i, I mean before seeing that code Let's go through our e-commerce e-commerce e log analysis. So here, here, what we are doing here is it's the same demo project that I had showed during the start of the training. Let's let I will explain the whole use case here now. So you have. Uh, I have a e-commerce simulator program. It will generate it will generate logs. So our producer, we have to write a producer here. These logs will be from the producer and producer will be sending the data to Kafka. So internally we use Avro Serializer. The messages are sent to Kafka. From there, we'll have a consumer. Our consumer is nothing but our Spark stream. We have our Spark streaming. Inside that, we have our consumer embedded. There, we have our 
Avro deserializer. And, and since we are using Avro, we'll have a schema registry. So we'll be sending the schema here and we'll be getting the page. So the consumer will, the Avro serializer will pass on the ID and get the Using that schema, it, it will decode the messages and give out the answer. Then we, we it is using part four. We start processing the data. The whole thing is part. Whole thing is Spark Streaming is a library and it will be out already and we're using Spark for the process. And we know that we know that Zookeeper comes into and, and we also know the use case of Yes, uh, uh, size of the schema is always in KBs. Usually your your size, but your message size is also in KB. Your message size is also in KB, so that that will that will double your message size. So if your data was one GB, and then your schema size is KBs, then it would have been fine. But but in, in case of Kafka, your message is also in KBs and your schema is also in KBs. So obviously it will double your message size. So because of that, that's the, that is the one of the reasons and validation of your messages is one more, which, which uh, I haven't as of now used in this case. But validation of the messages is also done through uh, is is my voice not clear to others as well, or is there any disturbance? And, and we know that uh, zookeeper is also required. So finally, finally, after processing the data, this data could be saved to some NoSQL database like Cassandra. So after saving the data to Cassandra, we, we can connect any web application to this. Web app can be connected to, to see the results on, on, on whatever is done by analytics on Cassandra. Or we can, there, there is a web app called Zeppelin. We can use Zeppelin as well. It's a visualization tool. It is a, a, a notebook kind of a tool, just like Jupyter, you can be using it. And we can visualize the data. So I, I hope you got the uh, idea here, how an end-to-end -end pipeline looks like. So, so we have already seen how a producer code looks like, but we'll also see now, uh, Avro serializer producer code. Slightly different and not much difference is there. It's not, uh, we will be, usually the Avro serializer is being used 
so, so that you create an object of your message an object of your message will be created and sent across the cluster So it's the same piece of code. It's the same piece of code. We go to the producer. Earlier I showed Kafka producer handler. So, so we, we create a producer object. If you remember, we, we saw this piece of code. We create a producer object and these two parameters are mandatory I said. Bootstrap server, key serializer and value serializer. Once we have a producer object, then then we know that using that producer object we send the producer response. So we have to take our actual message. Yes, so 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 we yes, in the last session we I mean few sessions back we saw that how the producer uh, sends a message. So you have to have a producer object, then you have to take your message from the client, convert it into a producer record, then using the producer object we send that producer record. Producer record itself you can think of the message going from the producer to the Kafka cluster. That's the API they use. Producer record. So where where you will have the actual message embedded inside that. So these things we saw earlier. Now now we have a a separate handler here. I have written a separate code where Avro serializer is being used. So when we use the Avro serializer. So there, there becomes one more mandatory parameter that is we need to specify to the producer where this schema registry exists because it has to contact that schema registry. So the producer has to contact the schema registry so you have to configure the IP address and the port of where the schema registry is running. So that's that's one more mandatory parameter whenever you use a Avro serializer. As usual, you have to specify the bootstrap server. As I said, at least two bootstrap server IP address, two broker IP address has to be specified. So, so key, we will keep it as it is. We'll use the normal string serializer. So value, value we will be using the Kafka Avro serializer. So, so Confluent Kafka have their own library for Avro serializer. So probably you have to download this library using the pom.xml. So you have to download this library. Ayok.confluent Kafka Avro serializer. Otherwise, you will not get that serializer. So this is a part of a Maven repository. You have to download that. So then, then we are creating our Avro producer. So what the Avro producer will do is keys as it is, it is a string. Key is a string and our, sorry, if you want to have generic producer, you can have a generic producer. 
where where you wrap your messages as a generic record if you want to if you want to wrap your messages as code generated we know that how how code gets generated so if you want to use that we can use the this is a this this class is part of a file which is auto generated by the avro using the schema we have generated this like piece of code so this file this file is auto generated which has schema just like just like we did as you can see it says auto generated by avro if you remember yesterday i showcased manually how to generate this scheme generate this code so using this schema this code has been generated so that that we that piece of code we will be using to create our our each message will be an object of this class now each message will be object of this class and and first we need to create objects for each message and then send that object what i'm trying to say here is we have our producer code here so auto generated code also exist auto generated code is apache event log so we we create an object of this class we create an object of this class and that object will be your uh, actual value so you create an object of this class and this object will be serialized using i, I mean finally it will be serialized into bytes and sent to that's that's how the things work so that's the reason we are creating those objects creating this class so that that class is where is that class available as i said you you cannot you should not manually generate this file so this file has to be this file generation should be automated this file generation should be automated so if i if i delete the target folder let me show that so as of now as of now as you can see the data auto generated file has been deleted so as a result it is not able to it is giving some compilation errors now how do we automate that it is it is all about you need to include this plugin so avro maven plugin has to be uh, included so what it will do is before compiling it will first generate the source code and and it it will it will look for where the schema exists so inside the source directory in this path we have our schema so in our project directory if you go to source main resources and avro if you go to source main resources and there if you go to avro so we have defined the schema as as yesterday we described it log analysis dot avro is the name space Na name is as we see apache log events as i said that uh, java file gets created with this name and these are all the fields that we have in our avro ip address client id timestamp request uri status content size referrer uri 
you use the ray function. So all these are the examples. So let's let's what I what we'll do is let's open that once again and let's see that the error exists because the code has not been generated. So as soon as I build this package, I, I will go to the tools window, tools window, then Maven project. You have to go to the view tab view tab in the view tab you will see tools windows so in the tools windows maven project so as soon as you click on maven project so it will open a window you can expand this log analysis you will get a life cycle expand this life cycle and you can say select package and run this so this will automatically before compiling your code it will generate the uh, avro using that maven plugin it will generate the code and then the compilation will be working otherwise compilation should fail so we'll see that compilation will go through So let it compile let it compile so meanwhile we'll see how we are creating our uh, producer so using these properties using these properties i'm creating a avro producer and if you want you can also have a avro generic producer in this case i'm using avro producer where where code is being auto generated using the schema and and our and our class name is apache log events so we will be sending records we will be sending records where key will be string and the value will be object of these records object of these records using those properties file so we have created our avro producer So then, then we have a method called publish. You, you, you can have a publish Avro generic record or you can also publish PC. So I'm using publish Avro record, which, which uses the uh, auto generated code. As you can see here, I think the compilation build is success. I mean to say the auto generated has worked. As a result, all this error has gone. It got closed. I pressed Alt F4. Instead of pressing Alt 4, I pressed Alt F4. So this target folder I had deleted. Now, whenever we use a Maven uh, plugin to generate the Avro code, so it, it will get created here. Inside generated sources, so you will have Avro folder. Inside that you will have a package log analysis dot Avro. So it, it is it is based on what the namespace you are giving in your AVSC file. In your AVSC file, you are giving the namespace as log analysis dot Avro. So a package will be created by the name log analysis dot Avro. And a Java file will be created 
by the name Apache Log Events. So this is our auto-generated code. This is our auto-generated code. So this auto-generated code we are using in our producer so that we can create objects of our, our messages will be objects of the class of this class and that's what we are doing here so we are creating an object of that class so data type is not required so so you have to just open it from file that's all you have to just open it file reopen project somewhere you will see log analysis so you have to just open it otherwise 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 we know that you can go to this this project exist in downloads training spark log analysis it exists here so you can just open from from the IntelliJ directly op go to this path and open this project. So as I was saying, as I was saying, publish Evro record. So we are creating an object of that, and we are setting IP address. We are setting client ID, timestamp, request URI, all the things we are setting with from the these things we are getting from our client application. IP address we are getting from the client application, client ID, which is our simulator program. From the simulator program, I am sending some record. Every five sec every one second I am generating a record. That record also is some class. And from that class, we are getting IP address, client ID, date, time, request URL, response code. All those things we are setting in our Avro generated class object. And, and finally, we use our Avro producer and send the call the send message and send our producer record. We know that producer record is nothing but which, which key is a string and value is an object of this class which we have just created now so this is our topic this is our topic and this is the object which will go as a value message which is our I hope this is clear so this is how we keep sending a Avro record. I mean, when we say Avro record, it is as good as saying an object of a class. And this class is auto generated using the Avro schema. That's all. So, this is the exposed API publish Avro record. So, this publish Avro record is called from our simulator program. So publish Avro record. This is the API. This API is exposed from producer code. So we have written a producer code and that code is exposed. API is exposed. Our simulator program will call this method. The simulator program will call this method. So we, we can see that. So if you go to the log generator, we have our simulator. Apache log generator Avro task. So if you go to this, you can find for publish record. I mean, I, I will not go through how I am generating the records. I mean, just an overview. I, I am generating on a giving some weightage for each hour of the day 
and I'm generating the records. I, I'm taking some random values from these files. IP address I'm generating from these things. Randomly I'm generating the IP address from these things. So these are the first two octets of the IP address. Next two octets I'm I'm generating random numbers from 0 to 255. These are the first two octets of the IP address. Similarly, uh, these are all the referrer URL. Referrer URL, we are, I'm just hard coding some Google. From Google, we have, this is a referrer. Facebook is a referrer. We saw an ad on the Facebook and we then clicked on that. So Twitter is a face. Twitter is a, sorry, a, a referrer, Times of India. Different, different third party websites exist as a referrer here. Similarly, what all requests we are doing. So these are some. We have category mobiles, women, fashion, laptops, storage. So these, these are the uh, messages we are sending. So my, my generator code reads these files and in a random fashion on a timely basis and keep on generating the records. That's what this generator will do. After, after creating that message, after creating that message, we just call uh, publish Avro record. So which will internally create an object of our Avro generated Java class and that that object will be sent as a message to Kafka. So let's let's run this program and check how it looks like. As we know that for this, we need to have our Kafka server up and running. We have to have Zookeeper up and running. Now we also need to have schema registry server up and running. So one by one, we will start all the things. We know that Zookeeper needs to be started first. Zookeeper server start, we say etc. Con Kafka zookeeper dot properties so zookeeper is up and running let's open one more tab so we'll start the kafka server kafka server start start again etc kafka server dot Our Kafka server is also up and running. We'll open one more terminal or one more tab. And we'll start the schema registry also. Schema registry start. Again, it is in the etc folder, but the other folder is schema registry. Uh, it will be running on a separate server. A separate server will be kept for that. Also, sometimes uh, it will be it will be made highly available. One one standby schema registry will be running. One normal uh, active schema registry will be running. So, if at all the schema registry goes down, you should have the other schema registry so that so that your processing does not stop yes yes it it may be also it is it is also connected to the uh, not maybe it is also connected to the zookeeper for high availability purpose just like name node and, and other things are used high availability so here also schema registry is also high should be highly available 
so that that part i'm i'm not doing here but usually that has to be done so schema registry start etc schema registry then you just say schema registry we have a schema registry dot properties file so your schema registry will be also up and running So you can see here, it, it will be running on this HTTP on 8081 port. It's a web server. So it will be running as a web server on 8081 port. So this we need to specify in our producer and that we have already specified. So, so you, you can see here schema registry URL we have specified that. This becomes a mandatory parameter whenever we are using Avro serializer. Otherwise it will throw an error. If you don't start a schema registry and you start sending the serialize start using Avro serializer, it will throw an error. So all the things are all the servers are up and running. So we we have to create a topic. So we know that this is how we create a topic. Kafka topics is a command. We need to specify where the zookeeper is running create a topic options and we need to give a topic name so if you see if you see to which topic we are sending the data here so it is there in our send method and the send method this is our topic i i have hard coded it i mean some some a uh, yes sir usually the topic will be created by the administrator so it will be already created and kept as a developer we don't have to worry about that we can also create but we need to uh, we need to have the permission to create the topic on the cluster we usually communicate with the administrator and ask him or her that that i need such a topic just create that topic So here, here I am hard coding it. I mean, the, this uh, project somewhere I have hard coded values. Somewhere I am reading from the configuration files. So it is not it been cleaned totally. So probably you can clean up this totally and you can read this from a configuration file. Some some things I am reading from the configuration file. So 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 here is a configuration file. So I have Kafka related properties, I have Spark related properties or configurations and Cassandra related configurations. Actually some places I am reading through these configurations and some places I am having still hard coded values just for I was doing some testing. So probably schema registry we can read it from here itself. You can configure the schema registry in your form and set it here you can specify the topic you can read this configuration file and get the topic but but i am hard coding this i'm hard coding bootstrap server also you can get it from here so just just i'm hard coding make sure that you remove all those codes in the consumer actually i am actually reading from the con uh, configuration file and and then getting all the configurations so we have to create this topic.
Yeah, that's there in the configuration file. Uh, uh, I will say that. It's there in the consumer side. I think it's somewhere I'm reading. Kafka Avro producer handler if I go. So you can read it. We have input stream. Am I using that somewhere? I don't think so. So let me show it on the consumer side. And it's as as same as we are reading from a Java code. So as you can see, we are reading everything from that one. So we are reading from this properties file. We are creating a properties object, Java object. And into that properties object, we are loading the file content. Then, then whichever property we want, we are getting those properties. I want the Cassandra database name. I want the Cassandra objective. So this is the way we are. Some places I am reading it, uh, and few. I mean, most of the places I am reading through configuration file itself. But somewhere I here and there I have missed for some uh, some testing purpose. I was doing some hard coding. So that that you can. I hope that could be resolved. So all all the Servers are up and running. So let's, let's run this. Also, we did not create the topic. Right now. So the topic will be topic will be so this is our topic. To created Apache log. So, so we know that it will be created in the temp folder. So we have. So here, here one more. If you see here, this is the system topic created. I think this is where, this is where, uh, the the offset management may be. The offset. Auto commit offset may be returned here, or no, not that. It will be auto generated. The offset will be offset commit topic. I said so. It will be not in this. I think it will be one more topic will be created for that. It will be automatically created. So we can go to one of the Apache log here, zero can just tail on this so that we can confirm that whatever messages we are sending from Kafka, a producer, it is coming here. So before running this program, let's see what are the inputs. I mean, uh, unnecessarily we don't need these all these things. These two inputs are not required because I am somewhere hard coding it. Earlier I was trying to pass it as a parameter. Then I changed the code to read it from the configuration file. But and, and for some other reasons I was doing some testing for my hard coding. These two things usually are not required. Only that the thing that is required is how many records I want to generate per day. So it is around 8,000, sorry, 86,400, which comes to one record per. So just, just run this.
साल के So as you can see, I'm randomly generating the e-commerce log. Every second, a, 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 a message is generated, and this message is being sent to the Kafka. So we can check this. Since we have three topics created, so you can see the the it is not every message is not coming here. One message is going to one topic, so it's a slow. As you can see, this is a bit slow. This is bit faster because because few messages are going to uh, partition one, few messages are going to partition two, few messages are going to partition. So that's that's how the process. I mean, the data is being sent from, from the producer to the consumer. So I hope the producer part is clear of this project and how the. It will just. I mean, it will just take this generated messages and send it to Kafka. So this is the one. Uh, I will locate the code here. So this is our generator code. This is the data generator. This data data generator uses this producer. This producer has exposed an API. That API is used by this generator, and it will send the message. So this is our producer. So everything is packaged. Everything is packaged. So in the producer, you will find Kafka as your producer, and this is the normal. Yes, a developer has to write this producer code. That is correct. So here is the question. The question was whether a producer has to write the uh, whether the developer has to write the producer code. And yes, that's correct. So as explained here. Our producer code is so we have exposed that publish as a record to our generator code. So generator code will call this publish as a record, and it will send the. So this part is done now. So tomorrow we will see the next part. So let's let's wind up the session. I I, I am winding it a bit quickly because because will I don't want half of that to be covered in one one video.